Looking back, uh, quantum cosmologist Christopher Isham muses, perhaps the best argument in favor of the thesis that the Big Bang supports theism is the obvious unease with which it is greeted by some atheist physicists. At times, this has led to scientific ideas such as continuous creation, that is the steady state theory, or an oscillating universe being advanced with a tenacity which so exceeds their intrinsic worth that one can only suspect the operation of psychological forces lying very much deeper than the usual academic desire of a theorist to support his or her theory. The oscillating model drew its life from its avoidance of an absolute beginning of the universe. But once other models became available claiming to offer the same benefit, the oscillating model sank into oblivion under the weight of its own deficiencies. Now it was realized that a physical description of the universe prior to the Planck time, that is 10 to the negative 43 second after the Big Bang singularity, would require the introduction of quantum physics in addition to general relativity. On the quantum level, so-called virtual particles are thought to arise due to fluctuations in the energy locked up in the vacuum. Particles, which the Heisenberg indeterminacy principle allows to exist for a fleeting moment before dissolving back into the vacuum. In 1973, Edward Tryon speculated whether the universe might not be a long-lived virtual particle whose total energy is zero born out of the primordial vacuum. This seemingly bizarre speculation gave rise to a new generation of cosmogonic theories which we may call vacuum fluctuation models. These models were closely related to an adjustment to the standard model known as inflation. In an attempt to explain or explain away depending on one's viewpoint, the astonishing large-scale homo homogeneity and isotropy of the universe, certain theorists proposed that between 10 to the negative 35 and 10 to the negative 33 second after the Big Bang singularity, the universe underwent a phase of super rapid or inflationary expansion, which served to push the inhomogeneities out beyond our event horizon. Prior to the inflationary era, the universe was merely empty space or a vacuum. And the material universe was born when the vacuum energy was converted into matter via a quantum mechanical phase transition. Now, in most inflationary models, as one extrapolates backward in time, beyond the Planck time, the universe continues to shrink down toward the initial singularity. But in vacuum fluctuation models, it is hypothesized that prior to inflation, uh, the universe as a whole was not, in fact, expanding. Rather, the universe as a whole is a primordial vacuum which exists eternally in a steady state. And throughout this vacuum, subatomic fluctuations occur uh, by means of which matter is created and many universes are born. Our expanding universe is just one of these many uh, universes, an indefinite number of which are conceived in the womb of this greater mother universe as a whole. And thus the beginning of our universe does not represent an absolute beginning, but merely a change in the eternal, uncaused universe as a whole. Though still bandied about in the popular press, vacuum fluctuation models did not outlive the decade of the 1980s. Not only were there theoretical problems with the production mechanisms of matter, but these models faced a deep internal incoherence. According to such models, it is impossible to specify precisely when and where a fluctuation will occur in the primordial vacuum which will then grow into a universe. 
within any finite interval of time, there is a positive probability of such a fluctuation occurring at any point in space. Thus, given infinite past time, universals will be eventually spawned at every point in the primordial vacuum. And as they expand, they will begin to collide with one another and coalesce uh, with one another. Thus, given infinite past time, we should now be observing an infinitely old universe, not a relatively young one. Isham, who is probably Britain's leading quantum cosmologist, has called this problem, uh, and I quote, fairly lethal to vacuum fluctuation models, and says that therefore they did not find wide acceptance. About the only way to avert the problem would be to postulate an expansion of the primordial vacuum itself. But then we're right back to the absolute origin implied by the standard model. According to Isham, these models were therefore jettisoned 20 years ago, and he says nothing much has been done with them since. Inflation also forms the context for the next alternative that we'll consider, the chaotic inflationary model. One of the most fertile of the inflation theorists has been the Russian cosmologist Andrei Linde, who currently champions his chaotic inflationary model. According to cosmologist Robert Brandenberger, Linda's chaotic inflation scenario is the only viable inflationary model in the sense that it is not plagued with internal inconsistencies, as old inflation and new inflation models are. In Linda's model, inflation never ends. Each inflating domain of the universe, when it reaches a certain volume, gives rise uh, via inflation to another domain, and so on, and so on, ad infinitum. Linda's model thus has a, an infinite future. But Linda is troubled at the prospect of an absolute beginning, he writes, the most difficult aspect of this problem is not the existence of the singularity itself, but the question of what was before the singularity. This problem, he says, lies somewhere at the boundary between physics and metaphysics. Linda therefore proposes that chaotic inflation is not only endless, but beginningless. Every domain in the universe is the product of inflation in another prior domain, so that the singularity is averted, and with it as well, the question of what came before, or more accurately, I think, what caused it. In 1994, however, Arvin Bord and Alexander Vilenkin showed that a universe eternally inflating toward the future cannot be geodesically complete in the past. That is to say, there must have existed at some point in the indefinite past an initial singularity. They write, a model in which the inflationary phase has no end naturally leads to this question. Can this model also be extended to the infinite past, avoiding in this way the problem of the initial singularity? They answer, this is in fact not possible in future eternal inflationary space-times, as long as they obey some reasonable physical conditions. Such models must necessarily possess initial singularities. They conclude, the fact that inflationary space-times are past incomplete forces one to address the question of what, if anything, came before. In his response to Bord and Vilenkin's article, Linda concurs with their conclusions. He says there must have been a Big Bang singularity at some point in the past. 